In this video, we're going to take a look at an electrochemistry advanced topic for AP Chemistry. It's using the Nernst equation to calculate the cell potential when an electrochemical cell is under non-standard conditions. We're also going to use the Nernst equation to find the equilibrium constant Kc for the reaction happening in this cell. So we've got a cell here described using line notation. And we, we know that in line notation, the first part of the description is the anode. This is where oxidation occurs. And the second part of the description is where the, is the cathode, where reduction occurs. We know that those are separated in line notation by this double vertical line, which represents the salt bridge. The single vertical lines in the line notation are called phase boundaries, and they represent a boundary between a solid substance here, zinc metal, and an aqueous substance, zinc 2 plus. So a phase boundary because there's a solid in contact with aqueous zinc. On the right, in the, ca in the cathode half cell, we have several aqueous substances, dichromate, chromium-3, and hydrogen ions, and they are in contact with a phase boundary um, with a platinum electrode, which we know is inert. So we, Chris, we don't need to do this, but let's just quickly label this electrochemical cell down below. So on the left, we have a piece of zinc metal. That's this electrode here and it's going to represent the anode, so there's the zinc metal. It's in a solution of zinc 2 plus, which concentr whose concentration we can see right away is non-standard 2 molar. In a standard cell, it would have been a 1 molar concentration. So right, right away I know this is a non-standard set of conditions. On the right, we have a piece of platinum metal, PT, serving as our electrode here, so that's platinum metal and it's immersed in a solution. It's going to get a bit crowded, so I'm going to write it on the side. In this beaker, in the solution, there is dichromate, Cr2O7 2 minus, 1.5 molar. There's chromium-3, uh, 0 0.0010 molar. And there's acid, H plus, um, 2.0 molar. We know that those are connected by a salt bridge, which is represented here. The salt bridge would be a U-shaped glass tube filled with, with a salt solution, like sodium sulfate or potassium nitrate, something like that. And the two electrodes are connected by a wire in this cell. We also could have put in there a voltmeter um, to measure the voltage if we wanted to see that. So there's the electrochemical cell, and we're going to calculate its cell potential. To do that, let's first find the standard cell potential, E0. We know that on the left, this is our anode, and so we know that the reaction there is, a, is an oxidation reaction. Oxidation always occurs at the anode, and so looking back at the line notation, if we think of oxidation numbers, zinc is starting at zero, and going to two plus, there is an oxidation reaction. And to balance it, we'll just put two electrons on the right-hand side. At the cathode, we have reduction happening. And this is a little more complicated, but if you examine closely, you'll notice that the chromium is changing oxidation states. In dichromate, chromium begins with an oxidation state of plus 6. Verify that for yourself. Cr2O7 2 minus, so its oxidation state for cr each chromium is plus 6, and it finishes at plus 3. So the chromium's oxidation number is dropping, there's the reduction reaction. So the dichromate becomes chromium 3. Now, if we balance this quickly, we see two chromiums on the left, so we're going to need two chromiums on the right. We have seven O's on the left, so we'll put seven waters on the right. And that gave me 14 hydrogens on the right, so I'll put 14 hydrogen ions on the left to balance it. The reaction's happening in an acidic solution, we saw. And then to balance the charge, there's 14 positives and two negatives, so there's 12 positives on the left, and there's two times three, there's six positives on the right. 
So to balance that, we'll need six electrons on the left. Seeing electrons on the left confirms that was a reduction reaction, whereas electrons on the right earlier confirmed that was an oxidation reaction. Now what I just did relatively quickly, we could have done even faster by looking at a table of reduction potentials like this. We could have simply looked up the dichromate reaction, and here it is here, dichromate plus 14 hydrogens and 6 electrons becomes 2 chromiums and 7 waters. This number is going to be important. That's its reduction potential, E naught reduction. Down below it, way down at the bottom of the table here, near the bottom, we see the zinc reaction, but we notice here it's written as a reduction reaction, so we're going to need to read it in, in reverse. Zinc becomes zinc 2 plus. So this potential, which is a reduction potential, will simply change the sign and we'll say the oxidation potential is positive 0.76 volts. So let's write those two potentials, reduction and oxidation, beside our two reactions. So for the zinc reaction, the oxidation potential was positive 0.76 volts, and the dichromate reaction its reduction potential is positive 1.33 volts. Now, the zinc equation is losing two electrons while the dichromate is gaining six electrons, so we'll need to multiply the zinc equation by three to make the electrons equal. And so now we can write an overall reaction. The overall equation will be three zincs react with the dichromate. The only thing that's going to cancel here when I recombine are the electrons. So plus the 14 hydrogen ions produces three zinc 2 pluses, the two chromium 3s, and the seven waters. The standard cell potential for this reaction will be the sum of these two potentials, the oxidation potential plus the reduction potential. And so that's going to give me uh, 2.09 volts, I think, doing some mental math, positive 2.09 volts. So that would be the standard potential if, back here, all of our ion concentrations were one molar and the temperature was 25 degrees Celsius. That would be the potential that our voltmeter would read. This is a non-standard cell because the concentrations of the ions are not one molar, although our temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So we want to calculate E0, and to do that we're going to use the Nernst equation. The Nernst equation says, let me just grab another piece of paper here, the Nernst equation says that the, the cell potential under non-standard conditions, E cell, is the standard cell potential, and that little degree symbol there means standard cell potential, minus RT over NF times the natural log of Q. Now when we break this down, the R here is the gas constant using SI numbers, so 8.314 will be its value. The temperature is the Kelvin temperature. N, in the Nernst equation, is the number of moles of electrons that were transferred, moles of electrons transferred, in our reaction. If we look back at this chemical reaction, when we recombined the two half reactions, we multiplied the first equation by three to give us six electrons lost and six electrons gained. Since six electrons are lost and six electrons are gained, six electrons, six moles of electrons, are being transferred. So in this example, n is equal to six in our example. The F in the Nernst equation is called the Faraday, and it's a constant. It represents the charge measured in coulombs carried by one mole of electrons and it's a constant. Its value is 96,500, rounded off to three significant digits, coulombs per mole of electrons. Q 
is our equilibrium reaction quotient. So it's calculated the same way you'd find a Kc value, um, writing the equilibrium expression, but you put in any other concentrations you want, not just equilibrium concentrations, to find Q. So now we can jump in here and say it's equal to E0 minus RT over NF ln, and then looking back at our chemical equation, we'll write the expression for Q. So the zinc is a solid, so we won't include that in our equilibrium expression. The water is a liquid, we won't include that either. So we'll include the zinc concentration cubed times the chromium concentration squared divided by the dichromate concentration and the hydrogen concentration to the power of 14. So this is a rather ugly equilibrium expression. So concentration of zinc cubed times chromium squared divided by the dichromate concentration and hydrogen to the 14th. So that's just the equilibrium expression for our overall reaction. So now let's put our numbers in. The standard cell potential was 2.09 volts, that's what we just calculated a moment ago, minus R times T, the temperature was 25 degrees Celsius, or 298 Kelvin, just add 273 to 25 degrees. The N, the number of moles of electrons we've already established, was 6 in this case, and the Faraday, 96,500 coulombs per mole, times the natural log of, and now let's remember what our concentrations were in the original question. You might want to pause the video and try this yourself. The concentrations were given here, so let's substitute those concentrations into our expression. So zinc's concentration was 2 molar cubed times the chromium concentration, which is 0 0.0010 molar, and that's being squared, divided by the dichromate concentration, which was 1.5 molar, and that's not, that's just left like that. And then this hydrogen concentration of 2 molar has to be raised to the power of 14. So there we go. So now we're going to grab a calculator and evaluate this. I'll just do it all in one step on a calculator. So uh, 2.09 volts. Take away 8.314 times 298. Divide by 6. Divide again by 96,500. And then multiply by that natural log and in here we have 2 cubed times 0.001 squared divide by 1.5 and to divide again by 2 to the 14th. Close that bracket equals 2.18 volts. So under non-standard conditions this voltage increased slightly from 2.09 to 2.18 volts. All right. Now we were also asked to find Kc for the reaction. Kc can be derived using uh, a, 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 uh, the Nernst equation, but if we have to play with it a little bit first. If we look back at our Nernst equation here, and we ask ourselves, well, what happens when an electrochemical cell reaches equilibrium? Well, at equilibrium, by definition, Q becomes Kc. The reaction quotient equals Kc when you're at equilibrium. The second thing is that when a battery or electrochemical cell reaches equilibrium, that's when it dies. So the cell potential measured on the voltmeter when it's at equilibrium is zero volts. So E cell is going to be zero when we reach equilibrium. So let's take those two things and make those changes in the Nernst equation. So we'll say 0 equals E0 minus RT over NF ln KC. Okay, so we made the cell potential 0, and we made Q equal to KC. E0, it doesn't change, right? That's the cell potential 
if all the concentrations were at one molar, which is then going to be a non-equilibrium position. So now if we rearrange that, we can say E naught cell is equal to RT over NF ln KC, which lets us find KC for a reaction, a redox reaction, if we know E naught. So we knew that E naught was 2.09 volts. That's equal to 8.314. Our temperature was 298 Kelvin. N is still 6. And 96,500 is the Faraday times ln Kc. So if we rearrange that, we can find ln Kc. I'll grab a calculator and do that. So ln Kc is going to be 2.09 volts multiplied by 6, multiplied again by 96,500, divided by 8.314, and divided again by 298, equals 488. So multiplying E0 out front by the denominator and dividing by the numerator gives me LNKC. If we now undo the natural logarithm, remember its base is the number E, we can say Kc is equal to e to the power of 488, which is an unbelievably big number. In fact, I'm sure that's going to be too big for my calculator, so let's try it. So if we go second function, natural log, so e to the power of, and then 488, the calculator says that number's too big. So the TI-8384 can't, can't express it because they can only go up to 1 times 10 to the 99. They can only go up to things with exponents of 99. Um, if you have a, a higher level Texas Instruments calculator, you might be able to evaluate this and get the answer um, with uh, an exponent of bigger than 10 to the 99. But we'll leave it like that and we'll say that's our KC value. Alright, so we used the Nernst equation here in two ways. We calculated the cell potential for a non-standard cell conditions when the concentrations were not one molar. And then we used it to find, we used the inert equation also to find the equilibrium constant for a redox reaction. Notice that when the redox reaction has a positive cell potential, standard cell potential positive, the value for Kc ends up being very large. A positive cell potential means that this reaction was spontaneous, and that simply means that Kc is large. So a spontaneous reaction means large Kc, and it means positive E0 cell. Those are connected. If your E0 cell is positive, you will have a large value of Kc, and your reaction is spontaneous the way it was written. Of course, if you then look at the reverse reaction, it'll have a very, very small Kc, and therefore it would be a non-spontaneous reaction. And in the reverse direction, we'd have to reverse both half reactions, and we'd get a negative value for E0. So a negative E0 has a small Kc value and is a non-spontaneous process. So I hope that helps using the Nernst equation and some higher level electrochemistry concepts um, for non-standard cells and equilibrium connections with electrochemistry.